Hey guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today we're going to learn how to draw beginning level Lewis structures. So what are Lewis structures and how do they work? Well, it says right here that Lewis structures are two-dimensional diagrams that show the bonding between atoms of three-dimensional molecules and the lone pairs of electrons that may exist in the molecule. All right, so Lewis structures are basically diagrams that were created by G.N. Lewis, an American scientist that lived in the 18 and 1900s. And basically his concept or his idea is that it's the valence electrons. Remember, the valence electrons are the electrons that are in the outermost energy level. And it's these valence electrons that are responsible for chemical bonding and chemical reactions taking place. And that the core electrons, that is to say the core electrons are the uh, electrons that are not considered to be valence, uh, really have nothing to do with chemical reactions. And G.M. Lewis knew this. So in eighth grade, when we, they, were, they were talking about the atom in junior high school or even elementary school, or maybe even in your ninth grade science class, they, they used the Bohr model of the atom to describe what the electron arrangement around the atom might look like. And so hydrogen looked like this, and chlorine might have looked like this, right? And so G.N. Lewis comes along and he says, well, I really don't need to draw the inner electrons or the core electrons here. If it's these valence electrons that are responsible for chemical bonding, then all I really need to be concerned about are the, uh, the valence electrons. And so instead of drawing a Bohr model of the atom for hydrogen, G.N. Lewis came along and said, okay, here is the Lewis structure or Lewis dot diagram of hydrogen. And this one little electron here is representative of this one little valence electron that hydrogen has. All right, we can also put the uh, little dot here if I want, or we can put the dot or the valence electron right here, or we can even put it right here. All three are the same. If we just rotate this hydrogen in three-dimensional space, we can end up with either one of these four arrangements. And if we take a look at chlorine right here, chlorine has two, four, six, seven valence electrons. And so the Lewis dot diagram for chlorine will be the chemical symbol, which is Cl, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven valence electrons for chlorine, right? And if we rotate this in three-dimensional space, we can have a chlorine uh, that looks like this as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or we can have it look like this right here. One, and then the pairs of electrons are right here. That will be the same exact thing. And uh, if we want to do one final one, we can here, where the uh, single electron is down here. Either one of these is acceptable, but understand the concept that with a Lewis dot diagram or a Lewis structure, that basically we're looking at the valence electrons and how those electrons bond with other atoms in a molecule. And from that, we're able to determine the molecular shapes of different uh, molecules uh, we're able to determine uh, the bond angles of different molecules as well. So understand that concept that with our Lewis structures, what we're doing is we are taking a look at the valence electrons only. And so that's how we write the, uh, the Lewis structures for these single atoms. So let's take a look at some rules for beginning Lewis structures. All right, if we take a look at this slide right here, it says th these are going to be the rules for beginning level Lewis structures. Now, there's a lot of different little nuances when we work with Lewis structures. Uh, a lot of exceptions to different rules and whatnot. So these are simply rules. These aren't going to be laws of Lewis structures. And much like every rule, uh, rules are meant to be broken. So every once in a while, there will be exceptions to these rules. But you'll kind of gather those as we move along through the, the several different videos that we're going to make about uh, Lewis structures. And remember that this is a beginning level. These are rules for beginning level Lewis structures. We'll have a different video on intermediate and advanced Lewis structures later on. But basically, here are the rules. I'm not going to read them to you. Uh, what you can do is you can pause. You can go ahead and click pause and you can rewind if you want and take a look at these rules and see how they uh, apply to the different example problems we're about to, to do. So we're going to take these rules here and we're going to apply these rules to several different examples momentarily. But let's take a look now at the Hanke rule. One basic rule of Lewis structures is called the Hanke rule. Once again, this is a rule, so there's always exceptions. But basically, what you need to understand is that hydrogen, H is for hydrogen, and hydrogen generally likes one bond. 
For example, if we take a look at methane, the Lewis structure for methane is going to be this right here. Methane gas is CH4, and the Lewis structure for CH4 or methane gas is this right here. And if we take a look at this right here, we'll notice that all of the hydrogens only have one bond. That is because hydrogen always gets one bond. There's no exception to that rule. When we're drawing Lewis structures, hydrogen will always end up with one bond, okay? If we take a look at oxygen, oxygen typically gets two bonds. There are exceptions to that rule, especially when oxygen is in a polyatomic ion, it has a tendency to only have one bond. But generally speaking, Oxygen will usually get two bonds, and one example of that will be water, right? If we take a look at H2O, and then we draw the Lewis structure for H2O, we'll see that water has got two bonds connected to it, all right? So generally speaking, oxygen gets uh, two bonds. Nitrogen will generally get three bonds, like with ammonia, NH3. And if we were to draw the Lewis structure for this, we'll see that nitrogen has got three bonds, right? It has three bonds. And last but not least, carbon. Carbon uh, generally likes to have four bonds, or most of the time, if not always, we'll get four bonds, okay? So if we take a look right here at methane, this carbon atom has four bonds attached to it. So the Hanke rule in general chemistry, uh, in a general chemistry class, uh, should help you out tremendously. There are a few exceptions, but... Uh, Generally speaking, that's how the Hanke rule works. So let's apply these rules to several different cons uh, several different Lewis structures now. Okay, so uh, we're just going to work several problems out, drawing the Lewis structures of several different single atoms, just atoms as they appear on the periodic table. And so whenever we're drawing Lewis structures, you're going to need your periodic table of elements for sure. And specifically, you should always have a periodic table of elements that has the electronegativity values. Uh, in it. If not, make sure you get one or find one on Google, but make sure that it has the electronegativity somewhere on there. All right, and in an earlier video, we learned that group one elements all have one valence electron. These guys in group two all have two valence electrons. These guys right here in uh, group 13, or sometimes this is called group three, they have three valence electrons. We got four here, five here, six here, and seven here and helium ends up having two valence electrons and all the other noble gases have eight valence electrons all right so that's something that you're gonna to have to commit to memory so let's suppose we want to draw the Lewis structure for say neon we'll write the chemical symbol and then we'll take a look where neon is on the periodic table it's a noble gas and has eight valence electrons so we'll pair these up at 90 degree angles on the chemical symbol for neon and there's our Lewis structure or Lewis dot diagram for neon let's take a look and if we wanted to draw the Lewis structure for hydrogen hydrogen has one valence electron and there it is alright so that's the Lewis structure for hydrogen let's take a look at boron If we take a look at boron it's got three valence electrons so what I like to do is put a dot right there for one of those electrons another one next door another one next door and there we go there is boron right there so what I typically like to do is place one electron on each side of the atom and then go back and pair them up, okay? And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at, say, nitrogen. If I take a look at nitrogen, it's got five valence electrons. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. And then I'll put the fifth one, come back and fill that up. So we can see here, this is why nitrogen prefers three bonds, right? Because it likes to, to bond to these unpaired electrons all right carbon if we take a look carbon is right here therefore it's going to have four valence electrons one two three four if we take a look at oxygen it's got six valence electrons one two three four five six and so now we can see why oxygen according to the honk rule likes to have two valence electrons i'm sorry likes to have two chemical bonds it's because of these unpaired electrons right here there's one unpaired electron and another one right here. That's why it likes to have two bonds. And last but not least, let's do one more. Let's take a look at fluorine. If we take a look at fluorine, it's got seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, so there we go. Actually, here, I'll put this one right here. Seven. All right, so those are the Lewis structures for single atoms. And now let's apply the concept of, of Lewis dot diagrams and structures to molecules. All right, so we have a molecule here, 
fluorine, right? Fluorine is one of the diatomic, the seven diatomic molecules that we learned about in an earlier video, right? So it always exists uh, bonded to itself if it's not bonded to a different atom on the periodic table. So what we want to do is we want to write the Lewis structure for this. So here we go. First thing we have to do is count the total number of valence electrons that are in fluorine. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, but there are two of them. So there's 14 valence electrons. So we know that fluorine is bonded to fluorine because it's a molecule. And what this little chemical bond represents is two electrons being shared between these two atoms here. So if we subtract two now, we have 12 valence electrons now that we must use to satisfy the octet rule for both of these atoms. Remember, all atoms other than hydrogen want eight valence electrons, and hydrogen only wants two. So we have to use these 12 to satisfy the octet rule. So what I do is I put six around this one here, and I'll put six around this one here, and there is our Lewis structure for fluorine. If we take a look, we've only used 14 valence electrons, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Remember this chemical bond here, this single chemical bond, this is a single bond. And this single bond represents two electrons being shared. Okay, so this fluorine has two, four, six, eight. This fluorine has two, four, six, eight. And we've only used 14 valence electrons. So the octet rule for both these atoms is satisfied. And there's our correct Lewis structure. Let's take a look at another one. All right, let's take a look at silicon tetrafluoride, SIF4. Silicon's got four valence electrons. Fluorine has seven, but there are four fluorines. We add these together, we have 32 valence electrons, right? So if we have 32 valence electrons, now check this out. Right here, we have a molecule that has five atoms total. Anytime we have an, a molecule that has more than two atoms in it, we have to determine which one will be the central atom. And the way that we do that is by looking at the periodic table. And the least electronegative atom in the molecule will be your central atom. And the least electronegative atom, if we look at silicon, silicon, I think it says 1.8 right here, and fluorine is 4.0. So silicon will go at the center. And it looks like it's got four fluorines attached to it. So right away, we can see we've used two, four, six, eight electrons for chemical bonds, which leaves us with 24 electrons left over. So now what we have to do is we have to place these electrons around these atoms here, making sure that all atoms in our molecule here have got eight electrons in them. That's known as the octet rule, right? So we count this up here. We've used all 32 electrons. Eight of them are tied up in bonds. 24 are surrounding the uh, fluorines here. And if we take a look right here, these are called lone pairs. of electrons. They're unbonded, they're all alone, and if you count them up, there's 12 lone pairs of electrons in silicon tetrafluoride. So there it is. There's the Lewis structure for SIF4. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, let's take a look at nitrogen trichloride. Nitrogen's got five valence electrons. Chlorine has seven times three. This will give us 26 valence electrons. Nitrogen is more electro, or I'm sorry, is least uh, it has less of electronegativity than chlorine. That's going to be your central atom. It looks like it's bonded to chlorine three times. We've just used up six valence electrons. Remember, a chemical bond here is two electrons, two each. So now we have 20 electrons left over. And now what we need to do is use these 20 electrons to satisfy the octet rule for each one of these atoms left over. And if we do that, we will end up with this right here, this Lewis structure for nitrogen trichloride, right? We've only used 26 valence electrons. If you pause the video and count them up, you'll see there's 26. And every single atom here has got eight electrons surrounding it. Let's take a look at another one. All right, here we have a different type of molecule. We have a polyatomic ion. And whenever we have a polyatomic ion, that is a, a group of atoms that have a charge, what we need to do is either add or subtract electrons. What this minus three or three minus means is that there's an extra three electrons that we need to add. So whenever you see a negative polyatomic ion, that means to add 
three electrons if the charge is minus three. If it's a two minus charge, then you'll add two, et cetera, et cetera. So first thing we do, we have five valence electrons here. Oxygen has six times four. And then we need to add the three electrons for this right here. Add this all up and we have 32. Oops, let me see here, 32 valence electrons. Pen's not working very well. All right, so now this is the least electronegative element, so that's going to be at the center. It looks like we have four oxygens attached to it. And so we've just used up eight electrons. Leaving us with Twenty-four electrons left over, and if I just put these around the oxygens, we should have the correct Lewis structure for this phosphate ion. My pen is not working too well, but there should be two little dots or electrons around each one of these. And sometimes, actually, you might see, you will see two dots as a single line over these, so that's fine too. All right, so last but not least, whenever you have a polyatomic ion, you need to put brackets around it and indicate the charge. Okay, so if this were a positive sign, if this were a positive polyatomic ion, then you'd subtract. Okay, so when we're writing the Lewis structures for polyatomic ions, that's how you're going to do it. Okay, so that is beginning level Lewis structures. Make sure you have your periodic table of elements out. Make sure it shows the electronegativity. Make sure you're counting up the total number of valence electrons. Make sure you're satisfying the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for or all other atoms. And remember to always put that least electronegative element at the center. And remember that hydrogen can never go at the center and you should be good. And I hope this was helpful.